பெத்தேல் மாநகர பேராலயம் வணங்கும் நாற்பது நாட்கள் உபவாச தொடர் சங்கிலி ஜபம் நாள் ஜூலை ஏழு முதல் ஆகஸ்ட் பதினைந்து வரை நம்முடைய திருச்சபையில் இருபத்தி நாலு மணி நேரமும் தொடர் சங்கிலி ஜபம் நடைபெற்று கொண்டிருக்கிறது தேசத்திற்காக சபைகளுக்காக குடும்பங்களுக்காக குடும்பங்களுடைய எழுப்புதலுக்காக ஆசீர்வாதத்திற்காக வேலைகளுக்காக பிள்ளைகள் கல்வி மற்றும் எதிர்காலத்திற்காகவும் ஜபித்து கொண்டு வருகிறோம் இந்த ஜபத்தில் கலந்து கொண்டு ஜபித்து ஆசீர்வாதங்களையும் விடுதலையையும் சுகத்தையும் நன்மையையும் பெற்றுக்கொள்ள அனைவரையும் அன்புடன் அழைக்கிறோம் மேலும் விவரங்களை அறிந்து கொள்ள உங்கள் ஏரியா போதகர்களை தொடர்பு கொள்ளவும் மேலும் மாலை ஆறு முப்பது மணி முதல் எட்டு மணி வரை யூடியூப் வாயிலாக தலைமை போதகருடைய எழுப்புதல் நிறைந்த செய்தியையும் அக்கினி மயமான ஜபத்திலும் கலந்து கொள்ள அன்புடன் அழைக்கிறோம் வாருங்கள் ஜபித்திடுங்கள் தேசத்தில் மாற்றத்தை கண்டிடுங்கள்
full just just full of themselves oh father yet lord you came for our sake and and you died for us oh lord and we thank you we're ever grateful to you for this oh father lord today lord we pray oh lord that you would be in complete control of the entire service oh father yes, lord. lord we also pray for all the people who are watching the service lord you know the needs of their heart oh lord jesus you know the needs of their homes lord we pray that you are their provider oh lord jesus whatever they need oh father that you would give them in abundance oh lord jesus lord that we pray for peace that passes all understanding your peace to yes, flow lord. into their homes today yes, lord we pray that your holy spirit would fill every home oh lord jesus Amen. lord everyone would be soaked in your spirit oh yes, father lord. lord we pray for the word today oh lord jesus we pray for auntie who's bringing the message today lord we pray that you anoint her oh lord jesus that she speaks words that are laid that are directly from your heart to father Amen. lord we pray that your holy spirit would inspire her lord jesus yes, lord. to speak all that you have in store for your congregation you, father lord. lord your word is like a hammer oh lord that that can break rocks of oh father lord jesus into pieces that is what the bible says lord we pray that this very word would pierce through our hearts today lord jesus and show all the dross and the uncleanliness in our life oh father lord we pray lord jesus for um, the entire service lord we commit it into your hands oh lord and we bring it to you oh lord lord you take complete control in jesus name i pray amen amen psalm 118 verse 15 onwards says Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. Amen. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand Amen. has done mighty things. Thank you, Lord. The stone that the builders this is verse 22, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Yes. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Amen. Let us Amen. come before God with a heart full of rejoicing and thanks for this salvation that he's given us. Let us come with a heart full of rejoicing today.
rejoice the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in you. Today is the day.
who breaks the power of sin and darkness the law is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king of power kings who shakes the world world in the world of thunder who lives his breath Glory, the King of Power King. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That He will take my place. That He will wear my cross. You lay down your life. That I will be set free. Oh, Jesus, I say, Lord, all oh, that you done for me. Who brings the chaos back into water? Who makes the offering? Her son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nation with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of his brilliance, the King of glory, the King of power kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That He will bring our praise That He will bear my cross You lay down your life That I will be set free Oh, Jesus, I see Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That He will take my place. That He will bear my cross. You lay down your Worship the creator of the universe, Lord. You are God who puts us on the highest place. Thank you for picking up from the bottom, Father, Lord. Thank you for placing us in a mighty place, Jesus. Thank you for the beautiful life which you have given us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are Yahweh. 
Thank you for creating us, Lord Jesus. You are our way. God, He's 
about to go for a battlefield David was not prepared he didn't know there's going to be a battle when Goliath when he was shouting and, and calling out for the Israelites who can dare come fight with me at this time everybody were like no I'm not going there will be someone who will be going for it Everybody stood back, took a step back. But then David, he was a young boy. He was a shepherd. He was taking care of the sheep. Whereas you see Goliath, he's been a soldier for all his life. David stood, took a step forward. He said, I'm going to fight this giant. I'm going to fight Goliath. Everybody were like, what happened to you, David? You going to fight Goliath? You are a shepherd. You, you are taking care of the sheep. How can you face Goliath? David said, the opponent is there with a the sword and, and like he's fully armed. I'm, I don't have anything. I just got a spear and a sling. He said, God is on my side. I'm going to get the victory. Amen. How many of you believe that we'll be getting a victory in every battle. Some, someone who's seeing this can take it. You can, you can relate to what I'm saying. That might be battle. You might be walking alone. People might mock at you. What are you doing? It's not even possible for you to do it. But then the battle which you're fighting, Jesus is with us. The God is with us. David said, the living God is on my side. Amen. We're going to fight the battle today. We're going to fight this battle and, and victory God will give us. We'll put God on our side. Amen. How many of you are ready? Let's, let's worship Jesus. Let's just praise His name. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we praise Your name. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
This is how I fight my battle Sometimes in the situation you see It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. When we have God in our side, we're going to have victory. Amen. No matter what problem you've got, no matter what battle you're facing right now, God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you. He says, Am I in your side? If I'm there in your side, you will surely win the victory. You will surely win the battle. Amen. And this is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight. Pick out the statement with me. This is our. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. This is our why. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, oh, oh. it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. But I'm come down But you wanna sing this again? Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Oh, oh, it may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Say, this is how I fight my battle This is how I fight my battle This is how I fight my battle this is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how I fight. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is our fight, my battle. 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 We're gonna fight the fair, Jesus says. If I'm there on your side, you're going to get the victory. There's no doubt about it. In the situations where you lost, you might feel God's moving around us. God says, I'm there with you all the time. Amen. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. They're going to declare the statement by faith. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for covering us with your wings, Lord. Even in this worst situation, Father God, you're protecting us. Thank you for your protection, Lord Jesus. Thank you for you being among us, Lord. Praise the name Jesus. strength in your name Lord Jesus whatever storm whatever battle we face Lord Jesus 
we know that you are with us you are with us in every situation lord thank you for giving us a wonderful time of worship lord thank you thank you for giving us the wonderful name jesus lord we pray let that let there be no lack in the blessings who have searched your name father lord you know that we are your children and, and, and we know that you are there with us in every time father lord thank you for giving us this wonderful time of jesus we submit everything into your throne of grace you take complete control of father lord we pray in the name of jesus we pray amen 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 Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to our English service here at Bethel City Cathedral. As always, we are so overjoyed to have you join us as we worship God, especially today if you're joining us as a first-time visitor, uh stumbling onto our feed. We want to say a very special welcome to you and we pray that God would richly bless you and that the words that are spoken today in our service will bring hope and encouragement into your life as well. Well today is such a wonderful day. The word of God says in Psalm 31:19, "How great is the goodness that God has stored up for those who fear him." I want to remind you today, God has some great stuff stored up for you. God has some amazing blessings that he wants to bring into your life. And as a child of God, it's not a hope that we have, it is an inheritance that we have as a son, as a daughter. God loves to lavish his goodness and his wonderful blessings upon your life. So get ready. In the week to follow, God's going to bless you with some amazing things. Surprise blessings. He's going to open new doors for some of you. New opportunities for some of you. And you're going to be awed by God's amazing favor and goodness. Today morning, we are absolutely thrilled to have our Pastor Ma who is about to bring a special word for you. You're going to be encouraged, you're going to be strengthened by her, and she's going to be sharing a powerful message in just a short few moments. But before we get into God's word, just quickly, I wanted to share with you some amazing testimonies that we received over the week from different members in our congregation who experienced God's amazing blessing. So here's some testimonies that I want to share with you and hope you'll be encouraged by it. I have a testimony from John Sumpus. And he says, "I praise and thank our God for making me stand as a testimony this day. During the month of April, I came to my native place, Ternal Valley, where the government ordered the first complete lockdown. At that time, when I came home, I was not at all ready for my work to be set up from home. It kept on delaying for the whole month. I was not able to work for the entire month of April." And when I actually started my work from home it was the 4th of May when they gave me the access. I was unsure whether the salary would ever get credited into my account or not. We just kept it in prayers and trusted Jesus and Jesus provided me with full month salary for the month of April during the unstable economical situation and the work from home was set up only on the 4th of May. I praise and thank God for his favor and grace towards me. What an amazing testimony from John. I have another testimony from Leander Suchin and he says, um, I've always uh, grown up with my parents since the day I was born. I think every one of us is. And I was kind of skeptical how I was going to manage things on my own when they left to go out of the country. But God has given me the strength to do everything at home and he's kept me safe and sound these past 4 months uh, during the lockdown. I was a bit distressed about my career. as i had no idea what was going to happen bosh had reduced the salary of its employees in all of the locations except in india but in my department the projects have started to increase like never before as a matter of fact i came to know that i have a project for at least a year from now and god has even took care of my job during a situation like this and then he goes on to say i used to suffer from insomnia last year it would be very dreadful There have been days where I couldn't sleep for the whole night and I would just go to work just like that. Maybe it was because of the nature of my job. It always put me on edge and I was worried I could not sleep at night because I was all alone at home. 
But God has given me peaceful sleep every night and he took away all my anxiety and I'm really grateful to God for everything he's done in my life. Praise be to him. What an amazing testimony. God gives sleep, good sleep to his beloved, the Bible says. And there you go. God's been blessing you with grace and his incredible goodness. I have another testimony from Krisha Christudas. And this sister shares this, I share this testimony as a witness to how God has enabled us to sustain and thrive during these months of lockdown. Our God is truly faithful to those who seek Him. I am a home baker, and in these past few months, my cake business has been at its peak. God has given us orders unlike, unlike what we've never seen before. My husband, Christodas, is in Dubai and is unable to travel home. However, even in these hard times, God has graciously given us minor projects to sustain us and keep him busy away from the thoughts of being alone. My elder daughter, Catherine, is doing her MD in the Philippines and is not able to travel home, but God has kept all the students safe and well, even during the lockdown in their dorms during, with their regular online work. Apart from all of this, God has enabled us to pay off some of our debts pay our office rent right on time and clear pending payments and could add so much more to our home needs which couldn't be done before, got done during these days. We can surely say His grace is sufficient for us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. In difficult times we seek God but for His love, care and mercy that He showers on His children, we're drawn closer to Him. We thank the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Some amazing testimonies of how in the midst of the lockdown, in the midst of economic difficulty, God still provided work. God still provided financial sustenance for some more than ever before. That's who our God is. He's able to make streams of abundance flow in the midst of the wilderness as well. The God who did these miracles for these wonderful three people is able to do the same in your life and more as well. Just lift up your hand wherever you are and say, God, I believe for a miracle in this month of July. Open new doors of opportunity. Meet my needs in supernatural ways and watch how God leads you in the midst of great difficulty as well. Well, today I'm also delighted to be able to encourage us towards giving to the Lord. And I want to read a scripture from the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. And this is what the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. There is one who scatters and yet increases all the more. And there is one who withholds what is justly due and yet it results only in want. The generous man will be prosperous and he who waters will himself be watered. The Bible says there is one who scatters and yet he increases. There's another one with holes and what's justly due and then he continues to also lose what he has. This is a promise and a principle that we see in scripture that Jesus also repeated and you see this principle repeated right across scripture about sowing and sowing always brings forth a harvest. A seed in your hand does nothing, but a seed in the ground produces a harvest. And that's what the Bible promises us. You know, the one who scatters what he has in his hands is able to sow into the ground and to be able to receive the incredible bountiful harvest of God. This month of July, I want to remind you, whatever good things and whatever things that God has entrusted into your hands, whether great or small, those are amazing seeds that you and I have been given to be good stewards of. And as we sow into the kingdom of God, this is the promise that God says. When you sow, you reap back a hundredfold. When you sow, God begins to increase in your life as well. The generous person prospers. He who waters others will be watered himself. So a great way of encouraging yourself is uh, encouraging yourself is to also encourage people around you to tell other people that it's going to be okay God is with them why don't you do that this week call someone today pray with them over the phone and tell them it's going to be okay God is with you God's going to strengthen you and as we encourage one another the Bible promises us we ourselves also will be encouraged I want to pray with us as you get ready to give to the Lord today 
that as you sow, for some of you, in the midst of great lack, you're sowing into the kingdom of God, and God sees us. God sees our heart at all times. There's one assurance we have. As we trust in God, we will never be put to shame. And today, as you sow into God's kingdom, my prayer is that you will continue to experience the, from the testimonies that we heard this morning, the abundance of God, the provision of God in the midst of a famine as well. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, today, as we, your children, prepare to give of our tithes and our offering, I pray that we will be people who give generously and we will be people who scatter with joy. And I pray, Lord, for every single person, every member of our congregation, Lord, whatever situation they may be going through, whatever hardship they may be facing, I pray that today there will be a divine providence of God released into their situation and into their circumstance. As they practice the principle of sowing, I pray they will also reap the blessings blessings of a harvest in their life to come as well. Lord, in the days to come, I pray for the miraculous provision of God in the lives of those who are struggling in their finances, maybe in their job, maybe in their business. I pray for miraculous divine provision in their life as well. We thank you for testimonies that will be shared in our congregation, just like today, of the incredible blessing of God, the provision of God in the midst of great need. Bless you people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You know, you can look up on the screen in different ways that you can give online as well. And as you're giving to the Lord, just to remind you of a couple of things that are happening today and throughout this week, right after the service today, the Build Professionals are getting together online via Zoom. They're going to be talking about cultivating an entrepreneurial culture. So if you're someone who is looking to sharpen your entrepreneurial skills, then I would definitely recommend to plug into this uh, Zoom meeting that's going to be happening right after the service. There's a phone number that's being displayed right now on the screen. So in case you want an invite for this meeting, just, make, just give a call to that number and they'll make sure that they will send you an invite for that Zoom meeting as well. The Teens for Jesus which is a special ministry of the church for all the teenagers in our congregation, is having a fantastic get-together every Sunday at 5 p.m. So if you have a teenager in your home, if you are a teenager, then I would definitely strongly recommend you to get plugged into this amazing fellowship get-together that's happening every Sunday where a lot of great people and great guys from our church are pouring into the lives of our teenagers and helping them during this time as well. Our Sunday school is doing a great job in producing some great program for kids, uh, kids from all the way from three all the way to 12. So if you have children in your home, you know, they post a, a video on the YouTube channel that's for the children's church. You can plug into that and get your kids to watch. It's also uh, ran live or runs live at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning as well. I realize we're past that, but you can still catch the video uh, today right after the service as well. And also, like we announced last week, the church is going through a 40 days of revival prayer. And we've been having a phenomenal time every evening as many, many brothers and sisters from our congregation are gathering together online via both Zoom and also YouTube. If you've not yet had an opportunity to join in on this prayer, I would definitely encourage you today to take the effort to join us uh, today and also throughout this week. Every evening it happens from 6.30 to 8. Just on Sundays it happens at 6 to 7.30. So come join us uh, tonight and throughout the week as well as Pastor has been teaching some great stuff on revival and how as a church we can position ourselves in a place to be able to um, get the move of God happening within the local church as well. May the Lord richly bless you and we look forward to have you join us for many of these wonderful events that are happening today and throughout the week as well. God bless you. to the darkness You're the only right among the wrong You're the only hope among the chaos You are the voice that calls me on 
Louder than every lie My sword in every fight The truth will chase away the night Your name is power over darkness Freedom for the captives Mercy for the broken and the hopeless Your name is faithful in the battle Glory in the struggle morning everyone and what a joy it is for me to meet you through this online and I want to greet every one of you in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's almost three and a half months since we saw each other but thank God for this high text at least we can reach one another through this online God is great amen we are living in the days that we never, ever imagined. Every year, what we hear from television and news is depressing. The whole world is shaken with the pandemic coronavirus. And thousands are leaving every day from this world to an endless eternity. I don't know how many are certain about their eternity. On the other side, what we are witnessing today is the limit of all human power, resources, and efforts. For the first time in the history of the whole world, everything is shaken. The powerful nations and the powerful national leaders now stand still, not knowing how to fight against the unseen enemy. The scientists are struggling every day to find the right vaccine and medicine to fight this virus and to eradicate it. Besides, we also hear the sound of war and, uh, that is raging around the country, not only our country and other countries as well, and also the disputes and the racism and the murder, the kill and the rape and so many problems are increasing day by day. Well, when we come and think of all these situations, who has the master key for all these pr problems in this world? No money power, no medical power, no political power, nothing can ever stand against. But you know, there is a wonderful and interesting verse in the Bible that is found in the book of Jeremiah, 9 chapter, verses 23 and 24. It says like this, Thus says the Lord, Let not wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in the riches. But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, and I am the one who's exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these 
I delight, says the Lord. Amazing verse. Amen? Which brings so much truth in it. And you know, when we are living in such days, and also Prophet Jeremiah says, wonderful and encouraging statement of verse, promise, in the 33rd chapter, verse 3, that we all know, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Well, when we think of all this and thank God for these lockdown days or not, wasted days for us Christians, these are the days to wait upon the Lord. These are the days that we can read the Bible like never ever before. These are the days that we can also pray like never before. I think God has brought this lockdown to shut down all our activities and just spend most of our time pray, pray, pray. At this time, we sometimes wonder, is God silent? No, he's never silent. Only at such times, he's doing something more greater, more powerful. And I believe that we are heading to a mighty revival that the world has ever seen. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you all to turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 107. I love this whole psalm. It is a beautiful psalm, and it, is, it has a sermon on its own. It starts with thanksgiving, praises, and also describes the mercy and the loving kindness of God. Amen? It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, and his mercy endures forever. And also the psalmist says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. As I was reading this psalm, some weeks back, it just captured me. And there is one particular, few particular verses that is repeated about four times in this psalm. That is found in the verses like 6, verse 13, 19, and 28. And that's very interesting verse that is just needed for the hour that we live in right now. And you know what this verse says? Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Amen? Psalmist portrays about four different groups of people in this chapter. And these four groups of people are caught up in difficult circumstances. And in each case, they cried out to God in midst of their problems that which they couldn't handle, but God answered their cry and provided deliverance right at that time. Praise God, for we have a God of deliverance. We have a prayer answering God, amen? Even in the book of Psalm 50, where 50 chapter 15 verse says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will glorify me. Amen? Well, there are four different groups of people that I mentioned. The first group are the wanderers. The second group are prisoners. The third group are sick ones. The fourth ones are those wonderful people who are caught up in a kind of circumstances that they cannot handle. So there are four different groups of people. The wanderers are mentioned from the verses four to nine. The second group prisoners are mentioned from verses 10 to 16. And the third group, the sickly ones. The sick ones are mentioned from verses 17 to 22. And the last group of people are mentioned from verses 23 to 32. Amen. You know, God has certain principles. He's an all-powerful omniscient. He's a wonder-working God. But there is some protocols. God says, when you call upon me, and when you ask, I will answer. Amen? We need to ask 
God says, ask and it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. If you ask not, you receive not. You know, every human being in this world have an access, a direct access to come to the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't need anybody's recommendation to come to his presence. Everyone in the world have an access, free access, to come to the presence of God. You know, even in the book of Psalms 1, 4, 5, verse 17 says, The Lord is near to all who call upon him, and to all who call upon him in truth. If you really mean it, he is ready to answer you. Amen? He is very close to those who call upon him. And I'm going to talk about all these four different groups of people who cried out to God in their trouble and how God reached out to help them. Whatever problem you are in this morning, whatever trouble that is put you into, and whatever situations that you are in, I have good news for you. Call upon the name of the Lord and he shall deliver you. Amen? The first cry comes out from the people called the group of wanderers. Who are these people? People who are lost in wilderness. People who live aimlessly in this world. People who don't know the purpose and meaning of their life. And their lifestyle is to eat, drink, and be merry, and enjoy life today, for tomorrow we die. That's what they think about life. You know, I would call them people of wanderers. They have no future goal. They have no any future vision in their life. You know, these people uh, are heading into uh, a life that has no purpose. They are also called wanderers. People who live away from God without knowing or understanding the maker of their life. They are also wanderers. People who are running after one religion after the other to find the truth, and they are the wanderers. There are other people who are running, who are running after success, who want to find their own identity. They don't know who they are, and they are also wanderers. You know, St. Augustine, a great man of God, said like this, Thou hast made us for thyself. He wrote it in an old English. Beautiful. Thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. Every man and woman who have never met their maker, creator, savior, Lord Jesus Christ, are lost. They are like wanderers in this world. Do you feel lost this morning? I have good news for you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus also said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Amen. You know, there was a man called John Newton who lived in the 17th century. And he had a godly mother who prayed for him all his life to find Christ in his life. But he was a little rebel. He took a long way. But there was a time, a moment, when he met Jesus. And when he met Jesus, he wrote a beautiful song called Amazing Grace. How sweet that sounds. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. Everyone who comes to meet Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, will definitely know the meaning of this song. Amen. Hallelujah. All you need to do this morning is to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to reach out his arms and tell you, my child, welcome home. Welcome back to your family. God is your father. He's the savior. He's the deliverer. He's all in all. You know what he does? He turns your problems into praise. Hallelujah. You know, these people were in problem, and every group turns out into 
praises. And it says, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to his children of men. Amen. It is God who satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Are you a seeker? Are you a wanderer? I have good news for you. You are in the right place to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All that you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord and he will deliver you. He will give you the meaning, the purpose for your life. The next group are called the prisoners. It is mentioned from the verses from 10 to 16. These people are in captivity. And these people are in chains and bondages. They are a kind of people who rebel against God's ways and directions and disobey God's word. Many in our culture and days think Bible and God's word is a very old fashioned. You know, what they think and what they do is more superior. They think uh, uh, what they think is more better than the word of God or the mentality of the Bible. Some call themselves Christians, but live very far from God's word and live according to their own feelings and pleasures. You know, sin is deceptive and leads to rebel God and his ways and to fall in bondages. A man who willingly rebels God falls definitely into the bondages. Satan is ready to put him under his bondage. That's what in Jude, first chapter, fourth verse, fourteenth, fourth verse says. The second part of it, I will read it for you. Ungodly men who turn the grace of the Lord God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They willingly deny. But you know, the word of God says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. God graciously brings hardships sometimes in our lives to turn us from the difficulties, to turn us back to him, to turn back to his love. Amen. So we need to be thankful for we have such a loving God. Amen. God is such a wonderful father to us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to show his kindness and mercy to us. All that we need to do is just cry to him. That's what these people did. Verse 13 says, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. I have good news for you. There is someone who's always tracking your life and he has fixed his eyes upon you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to bless you. He wants to lead you. And he's the one who wants to break all the chains in your life. He wants to deliver you from all the captivity. Whatever bondage you are caught up in this morning, I have good news for you. We have a deliverer by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a king mentioned in the Bible called Manasseh. Manasseh was the son of a very godly father and king called Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a man who loved the Lord and walked in the ways of God. Sometimes, even in godly families, we get some black sheep in the family. One of your child may be a black sheep. One of your daughter may be a black sheep. Don't worry. Don't give up your prayers. This is what happened in the life of Manasseh. He turned away from God. He rebelled. Knowingly and willingly he did that. You know what God did? It is mentioned in the book called uh, Second Chronicles chapter 33 from verses 11 to 13. God allowed some enemies called Assyrians to come and capture him. They captured him. They bound him with all the chains, even thorns, and they dragged him as a slave to his 
to their enemy's place. And that was the moment Manasseh cried out to God. What a good God we have, you know, even though you sin knowingly, but he's such a gracious father. He comes after you. God heard his cry and God delivered him and brought him back to his kingdom and made him the king. Hallelujah. I have good news for you. You have hope for your children who are far away from God. God will bring them back. Amen. Bring them back to his family and to the fold of his love. There is another group called uh, sick ones. Those who are sick. Sickness comes for various reasons. Well, but here the physical illnesses are due to their sin that is described in the verses 17 and 18 says, Fools because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Well, sin eventually takes a toll on a person emotionally and often physically, rebel and fall into sicknesses. I, for example, these drug addicts and alcoholics purposely rebel and fall into sicknesses. They are in trouble because of their outright rebellion. Sometimes we think it's good that God punishes them. No, 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 no. God is not like that. We think they don't deserve God's grace. But what is grace meant for? Grace is meant to favor the undeserved one. Amen? We have such a gracious God. However, at times you run away from him. He's so gracious to reach out his hand to bring you back to his love and to his fold and embrace. Amen? Maybe you're sick this morning or today for different other reasons. Perhaps you are born with some sicknesses. Whatever the reason for your sickness could be, doesn't matter to God. I have good news for you. There's only one person who holds the key for your situation. Key for your turnover is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. All that you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. This is what these people did. Again and again, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. As long as we live in this world, what a great privilege to call upon the name of the Lord for all of our needs. Amen? The key to all our problem is to call upon his name and he's there to deliver us. In this uh, passage, it says, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them. Amen? God sent his word and healed them. I have good news for you. The people in the days of Psalm lived in the Old Testament. But you and me are living in the New Testament days. For us, Jesus paid a great price on the cross of Calvary. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are delivered. Someone paid the price for us. Someone has done everything for us on the cross. Amen. The word says he sent his word and delivered them from all their distractions. Whatever sickness you are in, maybe you are near to the point of death. But good news is God is here to deliver you. All that you need to do is call upon the name of Jesus. This one name, Jesus, is packed with power and packed with all blessings to meet all the needs of your life. Amen? Hallelujah. What a powerful name is the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. It is God who turns our problems to praise. He turns our mourning into dancing. He turns our tears to joy and he turns our shame to glory. Hallelujah. God has the key to turn around all your situations. Amen for that. Hallelujah. So 
whatever situation you are in the sickness, even if it is coronavirus, even if it is any other problem, I have good news for you. We have a master healer, master physician, the one who holds a master key in his hand. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. The fourth group are the group of people who have caught up in unexpected problems. They are very good people. They are not rebels. They are good people like you and me. Amen? But they are caught up in unavoidable problems. They are sailors. It is mentioned from the verse from 23 to 32 in the book of Psalm 107. And these people group are caught up in a storm and they are facing challenges unavoidable. It's all because of an unavoidable circumstances. These sailors who are skillful lived all their life in the sea. They know in and out of the sea. And they are very, very skillful. They're very successful. And they have lived all their life. They know they can face and overcome any challenges, any storm in the sea. But now there is a hurricane. There is a storm that is allowed by God and then the gigantic forces are raging and these people try all their best to bring everything under control but nothing comes in their control. It is out of their control. Isn't that awful? These men who are skillful in the sea use all their wisdom all their skill and their efforts all come to a standstill. Have you ever been in a sea, in a storm? Have you ever experienced that? Well, I vaguely remember in the year 1981, Pastor and myself were newly married, and we were traveling from Scandinavia to Holland. We happened to go by a ship, and that was so sad that it was a very wrong day to travel, and the sea was roaring, and the ship was shaking like anything. Pastor wanted me to come out and see the beautiful sea, and there were nice restaurants and everything, but I would not go out of my room, because I was throwing up so many times. All that I remember is my bad experience of throwing, and the, the, the very seasickness only. It's not, it's not easy to be in a sea when it is rough. But here we see that, uh, if you see the verses 25 says, for God commands and raises the stormy wind, which he lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens and they go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. Well, sometimes problem hit to the people even the wise or the experts, skillful, have no answer for that. Are we not living in such days today? We are living in such days that everything has come to a standstill. Even the powerful nations are wondering what to do. Even the very wise scientists don't know how to handle. Everything has come to a standstill. What do we do now? We do what these people did. What they did when they saw everything is out of their control. They cried out to God. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brings them out of their distresses. Amen. This is what some of the national leaders also said. Someone went and asked a national leader, when will this coronavirus leave us? When will this be over? And he, he opened his arm, he says, God alone knows it. Nobody has the answer. I have good news for you. You and me belong to that God, the God of the universe, the one who has the power, the one who holds the key for every situation, for every problem, is my God and your God. He has the answer. But all that he wants is, is to cry out to him at this moment. These are the days to pray, pray, pray. You know, when I think of Jonah, God asked him to go to Nineveh. But he took another ship and he went on another route. 
God commanded a wind just to bring back Jonah to the right track. And you know what? Even in the storm, when all other people were crying out to God, Jonah was sleeping. Some Christians are like that. Even at such days like this, they don't bother. They are caught up in television. They are this and that. They take things very lightly. These are the days to pray, cry out to God. But you know what God did? God had to deal Jonah separately. Then he commanded a fish to come and swallow fish, Jonah. And Jonah, from the moment he got into the belly of the fish, he began to pray, 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 pray. He cried out to God from the depths of the sea, depths of the ocean. Well, God has his own way to draw us, to draw our attention to him, to draw us close. Well, these are the days we need to cry out to God like ever before. I am very thankful for the church BCC. Pastor has arranged 40 days of prayer. I know last night about more than 170 people were together praying for revival. We know in these days God is preparing the church. God is preparing us for something great. Amen? Even though we live in this world, we face challenges like everybody else. But we know one good news is our God has the final say and he has the final answer. He has got the master key for all situations that is happening today. All that we need to do, church, rise up. Time to pray. Cry out to God. If everything is all right with you, don't sit back. Cry out for your neighbors. Cry out for your relatives. Cry out for the people of the nation. Cry out for the people around the world, to the ends of the world. God has kept us in these days for a purpose. Amen? Hallelujah. All these groups of people overcame their troubles, their challenges, their difficulties, their problems by doing one thing. What was that? They cried out to God. They cried out to God and asked for his help. You know, man's extremity is God's opportunity. It's a good saying. When you come to that level, you don't know what else to do. All that you need to do is just depend on him. Just trust him. Amen? Then he will do wonders. It is God who is able to reveal his immense love and grace and the power of deliverance in our life situations. Amen? You know, King David says in Psalm third chapter, verses three and four. And he says, I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from the holy hill. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. Amen? He's the one who lifts up our head. Hallelujah. In all life situations, we have an anchor, a great strength, God on our side. Amen? Hallelujah. There's another verse that is repeated. Also, likewise, um, the verses that I mentioned, uh, crying out to God. There is another verse that is praise verse that is mentioned four times again. That is 8th verse, 15, 21, and 31. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works for the children of men. Amen? Hallelujah. When you cry out to God in your problem, he turns it to a praise party. Hallelujah. And you lift up your voice in praising God, giving glory. I tell you, friends, glory belongs to him alone. Amen? To him alone. He's the one who holds everything. You know, he has the key. Sometimes he could turn the poverty into plenty, and sometimes he can turn plenty into poverty. That's what is mentioned from verses from uh, 33 onwards. He even runs um, a wilderness into water springs. Sometimes he does the opposite, a water springs into wilderness. So he holds 
everything about you and me and the whole world. We don't know what's going to happen for the world tomorrow, but God knows because he has the whole power and the keys for all our tomorrows. He can unlock any door for us. Amen. I thank God for you and me. He has turned the wilderness to water springs. And he's able to turn your barrenness to fruitfulness. And your desolate land will become a harvest field to God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a God who will give increase and he will multiply greatly. Amen for that. I have good news for you, dear children of God. Whatever situation you are in this morning, it, you may be a wanderer, or you may be a prisoner, or you may be caught up in sickness, or in any unavoidable circumstances that is out of your control. Whatever situations you are in this morning, the good news is, Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And he will come down the very moment you call his name. He will immediately answer you. He will reach out to you. He will help you. He will release you, deliver you from all the distresses, from all the problems. Because he's a God full of mercy, grace, loving kindness. And I encourage you, motivate you this morning. Call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. There is another beautiful verse that this whole chapter ends is verse 43. Whoever is wise will observe these things and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Amen. I'm sure you and me are able to understand what a loving God we have. What a graceful God we have. What a great God we have. He's the God of deliverance. May God bless every one of you this morning. And whatever situation you are, I guarantee that we have a God of deliverance. He will bring you out of that problem and he will help you to celebrate a praise party and give glory to his holy name. Amen. God bless. Dear brothers and sisters, we've been reading this beautiful psalm. Whatever situation you are in this morning, God is the answer for your problems. God will bring deliverance. He is the one who will bring you into deliverance and bless you. Are you lost? He's the one who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And as you are listening this sermon this morning, this is a beautiful opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. If you have ever, never done this, this is a right moment for you to give your life to your maker, your creator, your savior. Come to him. Just whisper this beautiful name, Jesus, here I come. Jesus, I call on your name. He will embrace you. He will bless you. I have seen so many wonderful testimonies on and on in my life. How Jesus saved so many desperate people. How he turned their life into a glorious testimony. He's the same God who's able to turn your life to. Are you caught up in any bondages? Any, any captivity? He's here to deliver you. Jesus came to this world to deliver people from all bondages and captivities. And he wants to deliver you. Are you caught up in any bad habits? Are you a drug addict? Are you alcoholic? Whatever you are in, I have good news for you. He wants to deliver you. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're sick in your body, doctors may have given up hope on you. But your maker, your creator will never give up hope. And he wants to give you life. Life here and life eternal. All that you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. He will save you. He will heal you. And you will be a mighty testimony and witness for your glory. Maybe you are in such a situation and circumstances that is beyond 
your control. You don't know why this thing has happened. Don't worry. It could be God behind the scene. He has allowed everything to turn the situation for good. He does all things for our good. He can turn Mara into sweetness. He can turn our tears into triumph and victory. He's a good God. He's a good God. This is a wonderful moment for you to give your life to Jesus, to commit yourself just as you are. Shall we pray? If you feel that you want Jesus, wherever you are, just say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you. I call upon that beautiful, powerful name of Jesus. If you say so, come on, let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I praise and thank you for this wonderful moment that we can cherish reading your word, oh God. What a powerful God you are. What a great God you are. Whoever it can be, whatever situations they are in, you are the answer. You are the one who is able to deliver people from any problem, oh God, any difficult situations. Thank you, Jesus, for your doing your mighty work in every individual's life, oh God. You're going to turn their problems into praise celebrations, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for taking over their life. And Lord, from this moment onwards, you will be their God, and you will lead them eternally, Lord, eternally. Oh, Father, I praise you, and I thank you for this wonderful moment, oh God. I praise you, just like those people cried out. We go on crying out to you, oh God. You are a wonderful God that we could trust on, lean on. Lord, we love you, and you will always help us, Lord, to receive that wonderful victory, praises, and uh, all glory to your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. I call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. We call upon your name. A call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. I'll You're my God.